These days, when developers are constructing projects, they end up looking eerily similar. There's something about the zeitgeist that leads us to produce these predictable boxes. The dominant architectural style is in part responsible for this. Sure, previous styles also produced similar looking buildings, but with the advent of modernism, it became normal to strip facades down to their bare minimum while also abandoning local materials. To be fair, modernist architecture can be incredibly diverse, and if architects themselves had solely been responsible for designing new builds, our cities would have looked very different. But they're not. Behind these new projects are often developers that share the same goal, profit maximization. And it just so happens to be that a minimalist interpretation of modernism is their best friend. When taken to the extreme, they go on to produce copy-paste buildings, a sight that has gotten all too common. I was therefore pleasantly surprised to one day randomly discover that there is an entire neighborhood being developed in Amsterdam that challenges current building practices. Upon further investigation, I was convinced that this place was worth a visit. So on my first trip to Holland, I went to see a construction site. Northwest of the city center, we find Houthafen, a former harbor that is currently undergoing development and being transformed into a residential area. Right now, two-thirds of the buildings have been constructed, and the project is set to be completed by 2025. Once finished, the neighborhood will have 2,700 new housing units. It will also host a range of buildings that draw inspiration from Amsterdam and this specific location. Houthafen, meaning Timberport, was once a bustling center for the handling, storage, and processing of lumber. The port was constructed in 1876 and remained busy until the 50s when ships had become too large and a decision was made to relocate the industry to the outskirts of the city. The newly freed up land lay dormant for many years. It wasn't until 1994 that a series of proposals to revitalize the area were submitted. These proposals were rejected, resulting in the construction of temporary student housing before the current plan was approved in 2010. It is precisely this plan that makes Houthafen unique. Careful measures were taken to create a distinct place rather than just another contemporary-looking neighborhood. The area's overhaul encompasses not only buildings, but also the topography. The idea is to turn what was once a large dock into an archipelago of seven residential islands. The islands will be arranged to form canals reminiscent of Amsterdam's layout. This is one of many actions taken to create an extension that both feels and looks like a natural part of the city. The goal, however, is not to build a retro neighborhood that is copying the buildings of the past. Rather, it is to create a modern interpretation of Amsterdam, one that respects previous styles. A decision was made to approach this project in two stages. The first stage established a common framework while the second stage gave each island the ability to further develop its identity within this framework. The concept is for each island to have its own theme while also blending well with the others. One architectural firm is overseeing the general design, while many more are responsible for individual buildings. The common framework includes both aesthetics and functionality. When it comes to aesthetics, materials such as brick and wood are preferred because of their ability to age well. The project's visual quality plan explicitly states that the use of concrete and glass will be kept to a minimum. The plan also makes it clear that excessive variation can lead to a chaotic and unclear whole. Thus, a balance must be found between the common characteristics and the unique features. This is why the size and style of every building are predetermined. As for how it will function, the neighborhood is designed to be mixed use. There are various residential types, and the streets are built for people. That is not to say that it's car-free, but they're primarily placed underground in parking garages, making most streets pedestrian and perfect for block parties. These pedestrian streets are not only intended to be important places for social interaction, but are also meant to provide a sense of safety. All buildings, where possible, will have front doors and high-activity rooms facing the street. The idea is that everyone should somewhat know their neighbors. 
In regard to the second stage, the individual freedom given to each building depends on two factors. The first one has to do with significance. A few structures have been designated as special as they serve a specific purpose within the urban development plan. These buildings are not constrained by strict regulations, giving architects more creative freedom in their design as long as it adheres to reasonable standards. The other factor has to do with the theming of each island. Some are more rigid, while others offer opportunities for experimentation. One of these more experimental parts of the project is the port. It was the first section to be built and is definitely the odd one. What truly sets it apart from the others, besides being on the mainland, is the size. It consists of two rows, one reaching heights of up to 40 meters and another in line with the buildings on the opposing side of the canal. It is the most modern looking section and its shapes are more diverse. Each building in the front row has a design that corresponds to the building immediately behind it. Some even look like miniatures. It draws inspiration from contemporary developments in Amsterdam and abroad. The section is mixed use with plenty of offices located right next to the canal. This stands in contrast to the neighboring island, which is solely residential. It incorporates traditional Dutch design, yet a close examination also reveals a modern touch through its contemporary windows and balconies and lack of ornamentation. Initially, I believe that the identical looking rows, as seen here, here, and here, were cost saving measures, but as I quickly found out, it's intentionally designed this way. The buildings are meant to mimic warehouses where this pattern is commonly found. Even though there are no businesses on the island, the buildings are quite flexible and it wouldn't be surprising if some of these ground floors will be transformed into cafes or restaurants at some point. Moving on, we find the second island. This one consists mostly of townhouses. The buildings are influenced by the works of Frank Lloyd Wright, Cornelis Blau and William Dudock. This is where the project's community-centered concept is at its strongest, in part because it's no longer a construction zone and has had time to settle down. But there's also more to it. The street is exclusively for pedestrians, as cars are parked in underground garages. What's more, residents are free to furnish the public space to ensure a lively place. During my visit, several people could be seen relaxing next to their front doors, surrounded by plenty of green. Not only on the ground, but also on the walls. The third island also has a social focus, but this one isn't only communal, as it also addresses a societal issue. Property prices in Hauthafen are quite expensive, and to ensure that the neighborhood is accessible to various income groups, around 20% of the units have been dedicated to social housing. The entire island is made up of apartment complexes designed to blend in with the already existing Sparndamerbert neighborhood, which is heavily influenced by the Amsterdam school. That's why this section has taken on the same style. Island 4 is perhaps the one where you'll find the greatest differences between the buildings. It aimed to be experimental and gave young architects the opportunity to partake in the project. They were encouraged to use a wide range of colors, shapes, and decorations to highlight the individuality of each building. This is also a gated community, where most buildings have fenced in front yards. The last section that I got to see was island number 5. Here, houses are inspired by 19th century Amsterdam and they all form a collective through the usage of white details. The street is noticeably wider, allowing for ample green space in the middle. As for the two remaining islands, they were still under construction, so there's obviously not much to show. Number 6 is supposed to be built using timber, referencing the area's history and trade with Scandinavia, while number 7 will be another one influenced by the Amsterdam school. Although not a part of the project, at the very end of it stands a massive building called Pontsteiger which appears to emphasize the area's previous role as a bustling port. As Hauthafen has yet to be completed, it is difficult to judge how successful the project is or will be. Nevertheless, there are clues pointing in a certain direction. If we are to judge the project from a real estate agent's point of view, it has obviously been successful. In a buy option raffle, more than 10 times as many potential buyers participated as there were homes listed. Mind you, this is an expensive area. However, one should not only view the project from a financial lens. After all, the ones responsible for designing it had other goals in mind, some of which are in the process of being realized. 
During my visit, I experienced a pedestrian-friendly, mixed-use Amsterdam neighborhood, albeit quieter than I personally would prefer. If this will change when construction is completed is anyone's guess, but if it does, the area should be able to accommodate more visitors. Dutch architecture, or city design, is quite flexible, and as already mentioned, I can easily envision some ground floors being converted into businesses. As to whether this neighborhood can be easily replicated, the answer is likely no. Houthafen, compared to most developments, is considered prime real estate. It is close to downtown Amsterdam, which is reached faster by bicycle than by car. It also offers waterfront views to all its units. Thus, the land is priced higher than the city average, and as a consequence, ends up attracting high-income earners. Since most members of this group also prefer to live somewhere special, and have the flexibility to choose where to buy, developers targeting these individuals are more likely to include unique design elements. After all, the added costs of ornamentation and other customized features account for a smaller percentage of the overall cost relative to most developments. In other words, the free market has the incentive to make these places special. Unfortunately, that incentive does not exist for your typical new build. And as long as it remains more profitable and socially acceptable to just build residential boxes, they will continue to pop up. A change would likely require political action, but we'll leave that for another video. My first trip to Holland was a lot of fun, and Houthafen definitely added to the experience. Having already seen former docks being transformed into modern residential areas, it was interesting to witness a different approach. Don't get me wrong, Houthafen didn't feel like a retro neighborhood, and yet accomplishes something very few contemporary developments manage to do. A connection to a specific place. It felt like Amsterdam. It also approaches city design in a quirky way that I found truly fascinating. The idea of creating distinct islands makes for an interesting walk when traversing the whole axis at once. The best analogy I can give is to wander through several rooms of a large palace. Inevitably, the three pairs of opposites were also in the back of my mind during my time there, and in my opinion, they could all be witnessed to various degrees. The strongest of them all was the tradition and progress pair, where they clearly managed to incorporate both qualities without doing this. The ability to literally and figuratively bridge old and new is what truly sets this neighborhood apart, and it is why I thought it was worth a visit and a video.